Teaching can be extremely rewarding, but there can also be many things to keep track of like lesson plans, schedules, student lists, and more. In this video, we wanted to show you a template tour of our ultimate teacher dashboard Notion template. Notion is a great all-in-one solution to manage your classes and private students while keeping track of reusable lesson plans. If you find this video useful, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. We first wanted to give you a brief overview of this template. This version is for the group class and private lessons version. And we have three different versions based on whether or not you teach private lessons only, group classes only, or a combination of both. And finally, we also have a separate student portal in case you only need that aspect of this template. But for this version, we're just going to cover the one that has all of the elements inside. So you can use that as a reference. So the first thing you'll notice is that up top we have a to-do list. So here you can use it as a basic to-do list for all parts of your teaching. And you can also attach it to your classes and tag it with whatever category that it makes sense with. So this is a very free and sort of simple task list that you can use here. Underneath the to-do list, you have classes. So here you can see all of your active classes that you're teaching currently, and you can open them up to see further details. Under the classes, you have your private students. So if you're teaching both classes and private students, you can keep track of both all on the same dashboard. And then under here, we have the calendar where you can keep track of all of your schedules and also see which lesson plan you're teaching that day. So for this class lesson, you can see that it's lesson one. And for this one, it's lesson two and so on. So you can actually see the lesson plan on your schedule. And on the left hand side, we have a navigation bar where you can access all the different pages contained in this template. And then under here, we have all the databases stored here and make sure not to delete these or it's going to make the template not work anymore. Up here, you can also add your favorite quote about education or anything that keeps you motivated. And then you can also add a mood photo here. So let's get started with going over each of the different sections inside of this template. And each of these are going to be reflected in the main dashboard. So we're just going to take a deep dive into each of the pages, but you can also add simple things like new to do list items or check your classes through the main dashboard. So let's go ahead and go into courses and classes. So for the purpose of this template, we've separated classes from courses so that you can teach the same course year after year or have multiple classes teaching the same course. And you can also use this word course as a way to also tag it to your private students. So if you have lesson plans for your private students inside of a course, you can also access that easily by having them inside of courses. So if we open up one of them, you can see exactly what's inside of each course. So first you have the choice to archive it if it's no longer relevant to you, but you can see all of the classes that you're teaching for English 101. You can see all of the lessons and exams. So these are all lesson plans that you're drafting or whether they're ready and whether you've taught them. So if you have the same course the following year, you can use the same lesson plans and sort of edit them as needed. You can also see all of the assignments for this particular course, so you can kind of store them here. So if it's relating to private students, you'll also see the private student portals here. So you can also teach your private students the same course. And then you have all the resources. So whether that's activities, videos, documents, flashcards, useful links, and so on, you can store them all inside here so that each course has all the materials you need to teach. If you want to create a new course, all you have to do is click plus new course. And it's going to show up with an empty template where you can start adding your classes inside here. But the main thing to note is that we would recommend you to add the course and then you can start adding the lessons and exams here as well as assignments and resources. But it might be better to connect the course to your class a bit later so that you're not confused which course goes to where or where the classes are located. So mainly focus on the lessons, assignments, and the resources when you start adding new things in here. To add, for example, a new activity inside of your course, you could just simply click the plus sign here for activities. And if you wanted to add an entirely new section, you can go to plus add a group and add the group here. So let's say that you also want articles you can do that done and then you have a new category called articles if you want to edit these categories you can also go to the three dots here and then go to the properties and then you can go to the category and then you can click here and then you can edit them here as well so if we don't want the articles anymore you can also delete it here 
So now if you wanted to add a new activity, you could click plus new. It's already tagged by this new course and you can add things here. And you can also tag your activities with the correct lesson plan if you want them to be connected as well. But we'll go into this a bit further later on. So in each of these cases, you can add a new assignment by clicking plus new here. You can add a new lesson here. So lesson one and you can start doing that here you can see it in board view as well if you need to kind of keep track of what each lesson is in terms of its status and classes will be adding so for now we're just going to keep it like this let's go ahead and name this course for example english 102 and then we can click out if you want you can also add a cover photo here so you can go and click add cover if you want some kind of image here and if you want to archive a course, you can click archive and it goes into the archive tab so you don't have to look at it. So if you have only a few current courses, you can see them very clearly up top here. So now let's go ahead and add a new class. So for that, we're going to go ahead and click the plus new class button. And then here we're going to add the English 102. Let's say that it's the spring semester 2024. And you can add a school. So if you're teaching at multiple schools, this can be a great way to keep track of those. You can add the time that it's at and the location. So let's say that this is 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And the location is room 205. And then you can add the dates. So here you can add an end date. So if you want to see exactly when this course starts and ends, you can set up the date so that it makes sense. So let's say it's until here like this and you can set a status so if this is in progress you would set it in progress and then here for the courses you can click there and then now i'll assign it to english 102 and then in context you can have things like school supervisors teachers assistants and so on relating to this particular course so that you can keep track of all the contacts you need for this course the next thing you'll notice when you create a new class is that you have two public pages that are optional. So the first one is like a welcome page for your students and or parents if you're teaching younger children. So here you could have the course description, important dates, class policies, required materials. And for these, these are empty links. So you do have to configure these. So if we go here and click edit, you can edit this link and add the correct page or URL. So this is especially useful if you have outside links to different resources that you want to your students to be able to access. And when you're ready with this page, all you have to do is click the share button and you can go ahead and publish it. And then when you have this, you can basically just copy this link and it's already public. So this can be a really great way to share announcements and just a page where everyone's updated. So next, if we go back, we can now check the other pages. So the next one is a class syllabus template. So this is just here in case that you want to map out your syllabus before, for example, pasting it into a Word document or turning it into a PDF. So this is just here in case you need to plan that out. And you can also go to the share button here to do the same as the other page to share publicly as a web page. So now after the public pages, we have the to do's. So if you have particular to do's relating only to this class, you can also add them here. So what we might recommend is when your class starts, you could have this open and full page and then you can add some incomplete to do's at the end of the class in case that you need to note something down. Under here is a calendar so you can plan out your classes. So for example, if you have a class on Friday, you could put something like this and lesson one you can tag it as a class lesson you have the date a location link in case it's either a google map or a zoom link you can add specific students lessons and exams contacts if you wish but these are all optional fields that you have further information so if you're teaching a particular lesson you could click here and you can see lesson one that we added before so this is the lesson you'll be teaching in this class lesson here and then underneath here, you'll see a list of all of your students as well as a simple place to take some notes down. And if you have a lot of students, it could be useful to see all of your students here. So if you want to add a new student, you can click plus new here. And let's say that this person's name is Jane Smith. And for those who are private students, you would add the student portal. 
but in this case since they are in your class you can just keep them here you can add their email phone address and also archive when they're no longer relevant in your contact list and one feature here is that you can add a cover photo of the person's picture so that it's easier for you to remember everyone's names so you can go and upload the photo here so now if we go back to our classes and we open one up we basically covered all of the elements inside of each class so the next thing we can do is to go to the next section so next let's go ahead to students and contacts so here you'll see all of your students and you'll see exactly what class they're in and you can also see their phone and their email easily so it's just easy way to see everyone in your class when they're no longer relevant you can click the archive button so that they're not in your active list in the contacts you can add people who are relevant to your teaching such as teachers assistants school supervisors and anyone who might be important to you you can add to the contacts list and for each of these you just need to click plus new contact to add someone here and make sure to tag them with the correct class or student portal if they're a private student so you know exactly where they belong next let's go ahead and go into the student portals so this is the private teaching space and basically each of these are meant to be shared with your private student if we open one up, you can see an example. So here we have our student portal. Up here, you can add a welcome message. And then under here, we have tasks and homework. So for example, if you want them to start onboarding, you can do onboarding tasks and then add a type, which is a task, and then a due date. And whether or not it requires feedback. So if it's something that's homework, the student can set this to request feedback when it's done. And if feedback is available after you look through it you can change this to feedback available and if no feedback is needed you can put the red mark here and then you can also attach it to certain teaching schedules so that you can see all the tasks for each teaching session if you go to complete you'll see the complete list and then here you can see the feedback so if the student requests feedback here and then you can move it to feedback available when it's available so the next thing is the teaching schedule so you can see all of your upcoming sessions with the student you can see all the past sessions you can do a month view so that you can see exactly when the next sessions are so for example here you can see all of your sessions like this and you can see it in week view you can see view all and if we open one up you can see the notes a video recording of the lesson, homeworks and task resources. Based on the completion of the task, it's also going to show the task completion here. The next thing we're going to go is to the start here page. And here you can add welcome messages, the onboarding checklist in case there's any kind of onboarding needed. You can check the schedule for the sessions, tasks, homeworks and grades. So you can also add a grade tracker here in case that you want your students to keep track of your grades. Unfortunately, you do have to add the grade here and then the total points and then see the sum and divide them to get the actual grade point. But this could just be a handy tool. And if we go to message board, this is where students can add new messages or you can also add new messages for the students. So if we go ahead and click plus new message, you can add a new message for teacher. It's going to show the created person here, last edited time. And if you're done with it, you can close the message. If you add at mark and then tag it by the person, it's more likely that you'll get a notification. So you should ask your students to do that when they want to send a message. The next section is the payments. So here you can add payment policies as well as your unpaid, paid and view all in case that you are receiving payments for each of your lessons. You can also attach a contract here in case you need a contract for the lesson agreement. Then we have resources where you can add important resources all you have to do is click plus new to add them in and then we have questionnaires so at the end or beginning you can also ask various questions for your students so if we click a new one here and if we open it up let's say that it's the onboarding template it's going to load sort of a list of questions and you can edit these through the blue button here go to the three dots edit and then you can edit this text here so that whenever you add a new thing here, it's going to be reflected on what template you've added. And you can check the wrap up template. So at the end, 
what do you feel that you gained from the lessons and so on so make sure to always edit these questionnaire forms through here if you want them to be reflected and then finally we have the faq so you can ask frequently asked questions so you can add frequently asked questions here so if we go back to the student portal home now you can see the students tagged here who is in this student portal and the course that this student portal is teaching. If you want to continue using the same portal, you can also add new courses here or you can create a brand new student portal. And finally, you might be wondering how to share it. You can go ahead and click the share button. In this case, you will want to invite your student in as a guest so that they also are able to edit and interact with the databases so if we're here and they want to check off the tasks and homework they can do this themselves as well and for that you'll need to click the share button and then send an invite to a specific email address and they will need to be able to use notion in order to do that so now if we go back we wanted to just share how you can edit a student portal so as you can see each student portal had a welcome message and all these things if you find it tedious to edit them each time individually you can always just edit the main database template so that it reflects on every single student portal you create to do that you can click the blue button here arrow and then go to the three dots edit and then you can edit the message here all of the pages inside and then when you're done you can click out and then every new one you create after that is going to have the same template and if you want to create a new student portal all you have to do is just click plus new student portal and you can add the student that belongs into this course for example jane smith courses that this student portal is teaching esl lessons beginner and then a start and end date as well as the status it's in next let's go to the calendar the calendar is very simple if you want to add new events you just have to click plus new event what's unique about this calendar is that it can basically accommodate a large range of different kinds of events so if you had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a student you can do something like this and then tag the student here but let's say that it was a holiday that you want to showcase you can do something like this which is showing that it's just a school holiday and you can also add lessons and exams here depending on your lesson plan so let's say that this one-on-one -on -one lesson is going to be this lesson one and when you open it up it's going to show the lesson plan which makes it really easy to use if you want to add a particular time you can do so by clicking the date and then add include time and then you can add a specific time here. Next, let's go ahead and go to the lesson plans. So this is a really great place to be if you want to start planning your lessons. And once you're done, you'll basically have your whole resource of all lessons so that you can use it year after year. And if you want to reorganize the structure of what's being shown here, you can go to the three dots here, go to groupings, and you can move these around so that if you want to see English 101 here, 102 here, and so on, you can kind of adjust these as needed manually. And once you have that course, you can, and you've added one lesson inside, you can basically easily add new lessons here. So for example, lesson two, lesson three, and later on it's just easier to plan these things if you open one up you can choose whether it's a new lesson plan or a new exam slash quiz let's just go ahead and choose new lesson plan then you'll want to select lesson and then here you can start planning so you have your lesson objectives your resources for this your lesson outline assignments and exams and notes so this way you can really use this as a lesson planning device and when you do have something here, you can also open it and see when you last taught it. So this is a really good way to keep track of when you last taught this particular lesson and you can go directly to that calendar event, which makes it really powerful and useful as well. Let's go ahead and add a quiz. So if we go ahead and click plus new here, let's say that after three lessons, there's going to be a quiz number one. You can select the type to be quiz. Let's go ahead, open it up and choose new exam slash quiz. What's different here is that you can directly put in your exams and quizzes inside so you can store these and also see when you last administered this quiz as well. So in here, if you want to add a new assignment, you just simply click new assignment. You can add a course. So let's say this is for English 102 and you can add your assignment as a PDF or file to files in media. And 
store them here you can add the grade points how much this is worth for example and then you can also see which lesson plan it correlates to as well as some basic notes if you need again all of this is customizable if you go to the three dots here and you look at the groupings you can show the courses you want and in which order next let's go to the tasks so inside tasks it's just like in the front page you can see the name tag due date additional info in classes if you want to add a new task you just simply click new task you can add a class here if you wish as well as the due date tag and additional info what's cool about additional info is that you can add additional information from other parts of the workspace so let's say that we actually want to add a task relating to a particular lesson plan we can actually click here and then we can copy the link if we now go to our tasks and let's say that this is preparing lesson plan you can go to the additional info paste this link in and then choose mention and then you know exactly what you're trying to reference next let's go to the notes section if we go to notes you can simply add a new note by clicking plus new note and you can start typing various information inside you can choose the type is it about a student a calendar lesson ideas or a reflection and then you can add the tag here for additional info so if this was relating to a calendar event or so on you can also tag those in so let's say that here we have still the link from the lesson we have here this could maybe be a reflection so if you reflected on this lesson you could put it here and these all go to needs review if you've reviewed your notes you can just click them out so you can basically see relevant notes up here and then a view all down here next let's go to resources here you can add new resources and these can be attached to courses and lessons and exams so for example if you have a grade system these are useful links that you might need to store so this would be by category you can see useful links you can see activities and you can also see these resources by course so as you can see this isn't related to a course so it's going to stay in the note course area but all resources relating to english 101 will be showing up here if you want to add a new resource you just click plus new resource and you can add them in finally if we return home basically everything that you've added in each of these sections get reflected in the main page so as you can see we can see the new class we added the new student portal we added the new calendar entries we added and so on so everything is centralized and synced together so you can use any part of the template to add information and it's going to be reflected in each part Thank you for watching. If you're interested in this template, it comes in three different versions based on whether you're a classroom or a private teacher. We also have the student portal separately if you only need that aspect of the template. Let us know if you have any questions or comments and we hope to see you all in the next video.